The tank was first built in 1881, but was first used on a commercial basis in 1883, and it's the oldest surviving commercial tank in the world. Denny's were very forward thinking at the time, and they were the first to build a commercial tank here. And they actually had the edge on the competitors because they could virtually guarantee how a full-size ship would perform by making and testing scale models in a controlled environment in a tank of water. The tank was actually built in Pira Measure. Although I would say to some kids it's 100 metres long, it's actually 330 feet. And it's fresh water, it's not salt water. And two, the density between fresh and salt is slightly different. If they'd used salt water, the corrosive element in the salt would have had an adverse effect on their instruments. Working in the museum, I'm interested in history and I found this place really fascinating because it's, it's living history, it's, it's full of not only you know, the kind of technical side but also the social side of it, you know, that element of it because Denny's were such innovators not only in technology but also the social level where they had like women working for them at the beginning as tracers so they were kind of very forward thinking for the times and all that so you find all these things out as you're, you're going around. They made the models out of paraffin wax because what they would do is maybe make four or five wax models of the same hull shape they want. The results were then tested up the stairs, analysed by the tracer analysts and then if everything was alright, the wax models themselves, when they were finished with them, all they did was get a big wooden mallet, broke them up and melted them down and then reused them. It's kind of an honour as well to take people around and share history and yeah, kind of look on it that way. So that's what's, what I like about working here, really. Well, I've been here 24 years now. When I first started in here, you have to know your stuff, right? Because, as I say, you get naval architects, engineers in here that know a wee bit more than you do. It's quite satisfying to find people who leave here. They've got a lot more information about what the place was. Because sometimes they come in, they don't know what their expect expectations are. We encourage school visits in here because I sometimes take the view it's not the kids' fault. They don't realise how important shipbuilding was, especially to a town like this. So bringing them in for school visits, you're able to tell them. I think it is a really good educational facility for children because, like I said before, it is living history. Um, children, when you're teaching them history in a class, you know, they have to sit and they have to listen and they're looking at books and pictures. But if you're taking them out in the environment, then it's totally different because, you know, they're more involved, they're more interested because they can see it, it's visual. It's hands-on, there's different activities and things like that, so that really gets them thinking and understanding. So you get a vast variety of visitors that come in here, and I think the majority of them, when they come in, they're actually pleasantly surprised because they don't realise how much is in this building. All they see from the outside is the, the roof of the tank, you get ordinary Joe public that are just curious to see what the building is and what was done in here. So you get model makers, you get civil engineers, you get naval architects. With visitors as well, you're learning all the time, you're getting information from them. That's what I really like about the job as well, which I think is great. That's how I learned a lot. You also get visitors in that ask questions that you've maybe never been asked before, so you're always finding things out and, you know, so it's, it's good for learning, for me and for, you know, the general public. You learn things off the visitor and they learn things off you. It's like in a win-win situation. We had a group come in and I think it was Women's Social History or something like that and they were really particularly interested in the tracers being the first to work in here. And you think, wow, that's quite amazing. Especially when you see the old photographs, you know, and you see them all at their workplace and how long ago that actually was. And also you do research inquiries, you maybe get people coming in and they maybe want to find out about a certain ship that was built by Denny's. So you have to go and look the ship up, find the information out that maybe they're, they're interested in. There's various, obviously various rooms in here, but the, the main one that everybody comes in to see is the, the, well it's not a room, but the dock area, because obviously that's where you've got the tank. So that's the main point of interest. As soon as someone comes in the door and they see that, they think, oh, what's this about? Away from the dock area, you also have the model workshop where they made the models and it has all the original machinery. So you could be there for a wee while, come through all the different things, tell them about it. 
You also have upstairs the tracer analyst room. We have all the, the drawn office tools and a lot of artifacts and things like that that are kind of, you know, interesting because obviously they're, they're original artifacts, so you get to actually see how they functioned in their times. Years ago in Denny's time, everybody in Dumbarton had somebody that worked in Denny's shipyard. So it was a sorry day when it closed. There was over two and a half thousand people put out of work. I know it's all relative now, depending on where you are, but when you think of Dumbarton as a town, it was devastating when the shipyard closed. Yeah, I think the museum does Dumbarton proud because obviously there's not a lot left in Dumbarton historically. Denny's were a big part of Dumbarton. They had the industry, but they also had like social clubs. We still have the Denny Civic Theatre. Leaving Grove Park was gifted to Dumbarton by Peter Denny. They, they had quite a, you know, an impact on Dumbarton. We do do Dumbarton proud by having this place. Denny Tank's world famous. People here should be very proud of the shipbuilding history here, very much so. I'm very proud of it. A lot of people in Dumbarton, if you talk to them, they'll tell you their grandfathers, their great-grandfathers worked in Denny's. So it's their heritage, so we should be very proud of it.